continue now. Now that uh, my manager has been asked with the, with, from Nyongeza, the husband, that she finds the wom a woman for her, her, for the son, Zakayo. Sometimes my manager will go to, to the river and fetch herself some water. There she found other women also of her age by the riverside. Um, after what? After the water. You know, women never like to was in their lips and something to talk about. They call it Mshenea or Mama. So Mama Nasarumbi was there. She had also a, a, a daughter by the name Nasipuoni, also in need of water. So they talked about and discussed issues. Nothing so much will be discussed, uh, especially for such a woman of come of age to be married. As in that is what uh, they were talking about, Nasipuoni was there. She was actually looking innocent, but because of the elder, because of the the woman, the, her mother Nasrumbi, and the Nanjala, and the Nanjala, they agreed upon Nasipuoni to to go back to her marital uh, marital house. You know, Nasipuoni had developed to behold a woman. So therefore, in that very evening, she moved, even without her knowledge, back to the uh, Zakayo's house. My daughter, just live there. My son will, will be soon back. He'll find you there. I wonder where this boy has gone to drink. Kids of these days are just nuisance. But don't worry. He'll be back very soon. I hope, I hope he'll find you there in the house. Once he's, he looks at your good things there, he will appreciate having you around. He likes drinking a lot, but he will be back. Mama Antonina welcomed her daughter-in-law. You know, sometimes tricks are good for the lazy. Zakaya will find a woman in her, a simba, the cottage now. Again, in a village, Oh, we used to have a place by the name Mangeni Junction. It was our story corner, our place to sit idle and talk about our stories. Sometimes we call it Bungalamta, our people's parliament. We assemble there and beat about words, range of topics with the limited agendas. We talk to sense and nonsense, sometimes good for the lips. Again, ladies of the middle-aged passed by, Post a little bit to show guests their posture. They made their way here and there as though they had been sent to shop something from the market. But nonetheless, they carried nothing from the shop. They, grew, they threw classes at us at times to see how we observed them. Our Bukoso girls had something by their sideways. Small hips that accumulated to keep them welcome for some more beauty contest. Wee, wee, nyangwezo. Chikula dem, ametokeleze aji. Moses, whose appetite had grown, whistled amid his mouth wide open. He had seen something. Naliaka shuffled her way to the market. The presence of Naliaka caused ribbles and butterfly into my stomach. I lost my strength. I wondered what sort of charm that lady had that pulled me to the ground. Such is the feeling for a lady whom you love and respect. Carried with the power of woman, my bladder pressed me up and felled me for a false agency. Turning to the nearby bush, I let a few, drop, a few drops trickling down. I watched as if drops, as if each drops fascinated me. Naleka had not gone far. She had hypermyotropy eyes. She observed from distance and saw me playing with my thing. She giggled, smiled, and laughed to herself. She saw. I felt foolish and dragged myself back to the seat. I wouldn't bench. There it was. Days later, she actually demanded what she had seen. Sometimes boys went on errand and earned something for their bucket. Sagayo worked for Kongo, lifting and carried heavy loads to and from the shop. He displayed his well-built muscles. He danced to the music that came from the one very old radio he had carried. The only one in the entire village. Again, he touched on and checked on bicycles. He repaired on. He repaired, made, he repaired and made them right again. 
a bicycle was such a jewel to our native Bukusu land that only one man had acquired it, Benjamin, our pastor. So in that market, my mother also prepared something for the evening, porridge for her, for her customers. So such was the, was the day also, she would also do something to earn something. So in Wednesday, which was the third day of our week, which happened to be our market day, every person tried something for herself or himself to attach some coins into their pocket, either to make them rich or just to offer pleasure for handling such coins. Coins from the whites. You know, they say that sometimes you feel high with the new tongolo, the money in your possession. You know, all your problems will be solved and whatever someone needs will be made available. Think of work to be done, it will be complete. Just give an instruction and whatever someone requires, it will be delivered instantly. That was the power of money. Contrary to our former days, with the predetermined mode of exchange, which was a better trade, kind of. Now, after she had finished her first customer, she collected her fee and kept it safe inside a bra. That's my mother now. She had a large-sized bra that got holes of large-sized breast. She never feared to guard them. She was a mother of six plus kids, and, and she was proud of herself. Many, including myself, had breastfed from the dappled breast. She collected her little coins and wrapped nicely in a sugar carrier and pulled her tops and hid inside her left armed breast. She was comfortable, her treasure was safe, a perfect bank where no moths and rats would make fun with. Moses had finished half an acre piece of land and earned a substantial amount of money to ward around, drink, and celebrate on his wage. After all, he had something in his pocket, tax exempted, and nobody will question on his expenditure, whether he has misused or well invested to bring back with some good returns or that's a profit. Nevertheless, it was his hard and sweat from Katala. Katala is a manual worker in our language. Therefore, he had money to spend and uh, as he wished. Mamana Mkuru, another cup for me. Please, Moses asked for another round of porridge. If strength was built by eating, then Moses would have become more stronger than his simple bowl. My friend, you want to finish all the porridge before I take something? Look at you, this the young man. You drink a lot, feeding uncountable worms in his potbellied stomach. Are you pregnant for you, a woman? The guy made his voice hard. He had been waiting for his round, but Moses ran to snatch all what had, had remaining. He went into the kitchen, which was a grass-touched room, carried a whole bowl of remnant. The guy who kissed and made a puzzled noise and stared a stupid trailer to Moses. You will kill him. You fool! You have equal appetite for women and food. Why don't you limit yourself to one? Can you imagine? He takes everything. These are the kind of persons who will steal people's wives. The guy rushed over and tried to snatch it from his hand. I asked my mother not to ma mind as the two guys wrestled, I asked them to, I asked her to resettle as the two mighty wrestled for a snack. Benjamin, who had sensed the commotion, equally arrived. He was pushing an unkillage bicycle that required a repair. Another puncture for me, I inquired on his, I inquired as a, on his arrival, he, he actually encountered on, on his arrival. Moses had fallen into the strong grips of his elder, that is a guy, and he looked around for some help. Pastor, look at this man wanting to steal uh, my porridge. He could, he could not finish to talk. Huh? Moses knew he would find some refuge from Pastor. After, po after all, Benjamin preached and insisted on people to lay, to refrain from stealing. That was one of the commandments from a small Bible, a small black booklet that he had been donated with 
from an uh, white evangelistic friend. No, no, no way, Pastor. Can you imagine? He wants to empty the whole of ball to one his own stomach. Yet all of us here, we need some. We need some. We need this, some porridge. The guy made his defense half crying. He had not taken any meal from the morning. His wife never minded to make food. Given that he harvested a handful of maize, the Kayo and his wife cannot plan and make his farm yield to the maximum. Why can't you ask for your woman to prepare something for you and have it all? Moses replied. I call it the two of them there directed their assignments to Benjamin to find justice from him. And that's how it goes straight. And that's how actually the two guys, eh? Moses and Zechariah, lived with the egocentric genes eh? to have everything for themselves. Come over here, gentlemen, and do something to my bicycle. Pastor Benjamin called out for Zakai to come and repair his bicycle. He was his bicycle engineer. Perhaps to do something again for his machine. As usual, eh? Zakai and quite to. As he took up the task, I hope you as well are prepared for your part, you know, my payment. my payment. Don't mind, young man. As usual, I will do it. My daughter, a faith, has now grown big. I will ask her tomorrow to deliver it to, to your house. I mean, your wife, Anna, is warning. How is she, by the way? Still breathing well? And the kids, are they also good? Sakai never demanded cash from Pastor. He knew how Benjamin harvested enough cereals and packed up in sacks. With the bumper harvest of the first season, he had enough maize on his granaries. Thus, he would ask for three or four tins of maize as paper to his service. Three grogoro is, is enough. For a good customer like you, I don't mind. Uh, about my wife, eh, terrible. Things are terrible. Can you imagine? She wakes up at nine. Thereafter, begins to play kati with the children. She cannot get hold of her jembe and do something in the soil. I guess I married her before she was done with her adolescence. Soon I will ask her to go.